This is an introductory video for the bonding topic for A-level chemistry and it's really just to clarify a couple of things before we start looking at the specifics of ionic bonding and covalent bonding and metallic bonding. The first thing is about why atoms bond. So at GCC, if you were asked why sodium bonds with chlorine, you might have said something like sodium needs to lose an electron and chlorine needs to gain an electron and they both need to do that in order to get a full outer shell. And you might have even talked about the atoms wanting those things as if they were people with personalities. Now, to explain why this isn't a great way of looking at things, we can look at hydrogen and fluorine. So hydrogen and fluorine obviously also um, will bond together in the same way. And hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell too. And fluorine has one electron in its outer shell too. And if they bond ionically, then the hydrogen will become a hydrogen plus ion and the fluorine will become a fluoride minus ion. And both of them will have a full outer shell. But here's the thing. Neither hydrogen or fluorine or indeed the chlorine from the previous example actually go around as single atoms. If you encounter hydrogen out in the world or fluorine out in the world or indeed the chlorine from the previous example out in the world, they're going to be a divalent or diatomic molecule. They already have a full outer shell. So it doesn't make sense to say that hydrogen and fluorine are bonding together to get a full outer shell because they already have one it will be much more accurate to say that they're going to bond together in order to become more stable. And yes, having a full outer shell is one way that an atom can become stable, and that's what makes the noble gases so stable, and is why helium isn't usually found in compounds. But there are other ways that they can be more stable as well. And in the instance of hydrogen bonding with fluorine, this comes down to bond strength. The other thing that I think it's really useful to be clear on before we start talking about bonding in an A-level chemistry context is that our understanding of bonding at GCSE was really quite simplified. So we talked about there being three types of bonding. Metallic bonding, which would happen between metal atoms. Ionic bonding, which would happen between a metal and a non-metal. And covalent bonding, which would happen um, between two non-metal atoms. And yes, that's a basic good rule of thumb, but it is very much simplified. If we actually look at the whole periodic table, rather than just the extremes, then we start to see that really bonding is more of a spectrum. So yes, you do have metallic bonding and ionic bonding and covalent bonding, and yes, there are pure examples of those. So for instance, at GCSE, we would have really focused on sodium chloride as an example for ionic bonding, and sodium chloride is definitely purely ionic. And likewise, the various covalent small molecules that you drew for GCSE, like a hydrogen molecule and a chlorine molecule and an oxygen molecule, those beautifully symmetrical molecules are purely covalent. However, in the middle of there, we have some covalent molecules which are a little bit polar. So you can think of that as the electrons in that bond being slightly pulled closer to one of the atoms. And then likewise, you have ionic bonds, which also have some covalent character. Now, we'll explain this as we go through, but it's just a thing to really be aware of at the start, that yes, you can still be asked to explain what is ionic bonding, what is covalent bonding, but there are going to be instances where a bond is neither strictly covalent nor strictly ionic. Hopefully those two little things make sense and you're now ready to start learning about ionic bonding. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.